Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, we're going to show you how to use the updated surveying mechanics in Alpha 317.1 to locate mineable asteroids in the inner and halo, identify unscannable asteroids at long range, and determine asteroid type from up to 12 kilometers away. It's a winning combination that could spell a new surveying meta, so stick around to learn how it all works. I'm going to start with a high-level overview, followed by my recommended technique for asteroid mining, and then wrap up with some additional tips that should help you boost your efficiency. Starting in 3.17.1, the mining mode display panel shows asteroid type as soon as the scanning signal resolves from a dispersed cloud to a discrete signal. If you combine this with the active ping angle tuning techniques that were introduced in 3.17, you should be able to get asteroid type from as far as 12 kilometers away, which is enough to tell you which asteroids are worth looking at further and which can be skipped over entirely. Now, before everyone gets too excited, this does not work for surface deposits, so most of this advice won't be helpful if you're set on surface mining. You can still use ping angle tuning when surface mining to determine individual versus cluster deposits, but you'll need to get within a few kilometers to get the scan data you need to determine if the deposit is the right type and if it's worth mining. There is also one exception to the asteroid type display, and that is for unscannable asteroids. If you're scanning for asteroids and get the individual signals to resolve, but the asteroid type doesn't show up almost immediately, that means the asteroid is unscannable. So let's dive into my recommended technique for asteroid surveying in 3.17.1. This method works best in the prospector, since you have access to mining mode from the pilot seat, but it can be done with a mole as long as you have someone in the laser turret to gather asteroid types and a good way of communicating between the pilot and the turret operator. If you don't have a mining ship and are just surveying as part of a group operation, then you're not going to be able to resolve at nearly the same distances, so you won't be as efficient. You also don't see the asteroid type in the scanning mode HUD, so you'll need to approach the rocks to be able to get a detailed scan. You don't need to be in any specific band of the belt or aim for a particular asteroid density, as the mineable spawn rates are identical for each band as far as we know. It may actually be easier to survey in a less densely packed area of the belt, since you won't have as many asteroids to clutter up your field of view. During my testing, I had an easier time keeping track of individual signals and navigational markers in areas of the belt that had lower asteroid density, and had no problem locating quantanium deposits there within a few scans. Individual results may vary, and if there is a definitive answer on which band of the air and halo is best, then I'll update it in the pinned comment below. When you arrive in the belt, point your nose towards the star, but about 30 degrees off axis. You should be looking at the mostly dark backside of the asteroids ahead of you. This is going to cut down on the amount of visual contrast you need to deal with, making signal clouds easier to locate and individual signals easier to track against the backdrop of the asteroid field. Now you'll start in what I call the rough surveying phase. Start by setting your active ping angle to 90 degrees by using the comma or period keys. Enter mining mode by pressing M to bring up your mining details display and then hit the tab key to send out an active ping in front of you to locate nearby signature clouds. You should see multiple signals within range, and if you don't, you can start moving forward along your survey direction, sending out periodic active pings. You can also aim off axis and send pings to a wider area as you pass by. If you go for more than about 15 seconds without detecting a new signal, then it's possible that you forgot to widen your ping angle or there could be a server performance issue. Once you have a few signal clouds in view, you'll switch into the signal resolution phase. The signal clouds will remain visible for about 30 seconds after the last active ping they were in range of, so you'll have time to target multiple signature clouds with a focused active ping to resolve them into individual signatures. To do this, you need to reduce the active ping angle based on how far away the signal cloud is from your position. This chart shows the angles and distances you should aim for, but in general, if the signal is between 12 and 10 kilometers, you need to use the 2 degree ping angle. For 8 to 10 kilometers, you can widen it to 5 degrees, and then 11 degrees or wider for anything less than 8 kilometers. If you've properly targeted the signal, the initial box and cloud will disappear and be replaced with diamond markers indicating each discrete asteroid. If you have your mining mode active, 
This is where you'll see the asteroid type for working rocks, or the blank results indicating an unscannable rock. Now you get to the evaluation phase. If you're looking for quantanium, then Q-types are the only asteroids you'll be interested in. Otherwise, here's a breakdown of common asteroid types and their possible compositions. The specific values and composition are randomly generated, so you may not see each of these in a specific deposit. If the asteroid type looks interesting, then you'll need to move to within about 500 meters to get a detailed scan. And, as a reminder, all the asteroids in the cluster will be of the same type, so you don't need to pinpoint them individually. If you've resolved the signals properly, but the mining display is not showing an asteroid type, then that is an unscannable rock and can be ignored. Despite anything that might come up in the comments, I have never once gotten an unscannable asteroid to suddenly fix itself and become scannable. The good news is that, because you're now able to diagnose this from several kilometers away, you haven't invested any significant time or effort. Just leave it behind and focus on better, scannable rocks, which there are an abundance of. If you get through the entire scanning process and decide what you found isn't worth pursuing, just go back into the rough surveying phase and move along to find more deposits. If you end up finding a long string of unscannable asteroids, then I'd recommend making a quick quantum jump in an attempt to reboot the spawn logic for your nearby area. The main skill that will need some practice is the active ping angle tuning, and I've got a detailed video covering that process. Otherwise, it only takes a few rounds of practice to get proficient with this method, and you should be turning rocks in no time. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment below if there's something that wasn't clear or might have changed in future game versions. Now that we've outlined the technique, it's time for some helpful tips to improve your overall experience. First, set a quantum travel marker on the opposite side of the system and use that indicator as a general marker that you always head towards. This helps you avoid doubling back on previously scanned areas, and by selecting a point that gets you close by the star, you'll be heading towards the mostly dark, unlit sides of the asteroids. This is important because we want the signal clouds and diamond indicators to contrast against the backdrop of the asteroid field. It's a lot harder to spot the icons when they're hiding in a high contrast environment overwhelmed with brightly lit rocks. Second, use decoupled mode while you can to save on fuel. You can start running low on hydrogen fuel if you're out surveying for too long, and decoupling reduces fuel consumption. Decoupling also makes rotating your ship slightly more responsive, which can improve the accuracy of your focused active pings when resolving signals. Third, I'd recommend maintaining a speed of between 200 and 300 meters per second, so that you can balance the total area covered against your ability to maneuver towards a promising asteroid without overshooting. You can slow down if you find yourself in a more densely packed area with a lot of signals to investigate, which will give you more time to evaluate them and speed up if the signals seem to be more sparse. Fourth, if you're surveying as a crew in a mole, have the pilot enter decoupled mode and pitch up about 45 degrees. This will give the laser turrets a much more favorable scanning arc as you pass through the belt. You might even be able to use this method running a solo mole by switching between the pilot seat and the laser turret, although you're probably going to have a hard time covering much distance as the ship won't stay in decoupled mode once the pilot exits the seat. And last, the distance indicators disappear when you've resolved the signals, making it difficult to gauge your approach to a rock. If you find this to be an issue, you can set your ping angle to the 360 degree maximum and send out a new ping. The signals should now revert back to a dispersed cloud as long as they're more than about three kilometers away, providing a highly visible signal cloud with corresponding distance marker. In my opinion, this technique is just as efficient as the previous surveying meta of hunting for clusters on Lyria with the added benefits of providing detection for all deposit types for those miners that don't want to mine Quantanium, and allowing miners to branch out to locations that are less easily pirated without sacrificing the bottom line. And there you have it, the new techniques for surveying the belt in Alpha 3.17.1. I'd love to hear how this technique has worked for you, and methods you've found to make it more efficient. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, and check the pinned comment on this video for any corrections or additional details. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And lastly, 
like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because while unscannable rocks might suck, they won't be your problem anymore.